the Luminous Republic, what happened is I thought to myself when I was beginning to write a book that I was kind of a dystopian book on childhood and how society made up a truth after a traumatic event that happened. And when I was kind of finishing the book, I realized that more than a dystopian book was an utopian book on what I thought it could be an <clears throat> anarchist utopia based on a new sense of uh, civilization could be like in terms of we this is a book really uh, the, the presence or the shadow of Joseph Conrad is is real clear in this book of uh, Illumina's Republic and Joseph Conrad was always working with this subject of what is who is uh, who is the one who represents the civilization and who is the one who is the savage here and who is the one the wild one and who is the like the logical one oh, so to speak it was based actually in a real event that happened in rio de janeiro um, in the 70s as i read in a chronicle written by Clarice Lispector, who was a brazilian author she says that in an orphan house in Rio de Janeiro, there's a bunch of like really young girls that killed another girl by strangling her. And they make the, a, a doll out of the corp for a week. So they hit the body and start to play with the body for a week. So it was crazy. I read that and I thought, well, this is quite something. And I tried to work with the subject, but it was hard for me to work with that. Uh, it was hard to avoid all this sinister aspect of the story. So after a, mo after a month work, trying to work out the story, I realized that it was actually a love story. It was a love story uh, and it was kind of a paradise lost story too. So I tried to work with the structure and at the same time I discovered that it was a Greek tragedy <laughs> and there was a chorus of all these girls uh, trapped in the orphan house. So they, it was so interesting because with something that at the very beginning it was just a sinister uh, new, uh, it turned out to be like a whole structure again in which you can take a lot of elements from very different traditions like the Greek tragedy, you know, or all these, um, all the melodramatic love story, as you will, uh, and put them together. Uh, and the Walt Disney turned out like the dark side of a Walt Disney story, you know. Uh, after you've written like four or five books, there is something that is that can happen to everyone is you professionalize your writing. You, you, you become a professional writer. That is probably the worst thing that can happen ever. I mean, you become someone who can do properly, like write properly, like any kind of story. And it is the thing that you do well, you know? And it, it, it happens with every job and it could happen also with literature. But the thing is, you have, in order to be like a good writer and in order to enjoy your writing all the time, you have to push yourself to territories that you don't know that well all the time. It's the only way to not get bored. I mean, because boring, to be, to be bored writing is the most, um, I mean, I don't know, it's, it's a very clear experience as a reader how well you know when the writer is bored of his own story. You, when you're reading the story, you can perceive that it's something that is like, an, like, a, like a sweat in the book, you know? And you can feel that, and I hate that. When I, when I feel it as a reader, I hate that. And, and you can tell when you're a writer, well, I just get bored of the story. I just get bored of this. And that's like the red light. That's the perfect red light that you don't have. You have to stop writing right now. <laughs>